I believe we finished the other view. No, wrong. View. Oh yeah, we're, we're finishing the roof right here. Yeah, security feature. Security feature, basically, you know, always looking at. It. You're pretty sure you have you know, like 24-hour security, you know, or you know, automatic gate, or carbon monoxide detector. Definitely, you know, we all have that. So, whatever the house, you should have a carbon monoxide detector and a smoke detector. That's a basic, you know, building code. You gotta have it. Certainly, if you have any car code access, closed circuit TV, fire or smoke detector system, if you do have that, okay, because they sometimes they may have a combo with the alarm system. Fire ray, drywall, fire sprinkler, like this. This is a townhouse. They, you know, anything probably built it after 1980 something, they have this sprinkler system. This is a fire sprinkler. Firewall. Firewall, usually we have it between where? Garage and house. That particular wall between the attached garage and the house, that particular wall is a firewall. They have to hold it at least one hour. So between garage, direct access garage, what we have? Fire door. Why? That door is a solid door. Why did that door is different than your bedroom door? The bedroom door is hollow inside. It's empty. But if you look at the garage door, it's a solid. A solid wooden door, sometimes they, they may put a metal door. It cannot be burned. So that's why, you know, the, uh, if you do the inspection, usually the inspector will actually see if, you know, any hole of that fire wall, if that particular wall between the main house and the garage, if they have a hole, Usually they will tell the uh, the seller or the let, uh, the homeowner say, well, you gotta have to seal it because if the fire break out, the fire can penetrate into the hole and burn inside. Okay, between the wall they have still have a stud. Those are easy to burn, but that particular wall outside that's a firewall, not not just a regular drywall. <laughs> that's a firewall. Gated community, gated with the guard. So those are pretty straightforward. Guarded. Resident manager, security light, security system. If you have a window bar, that's more like a window roll bar. If you wire for the alarm system, if you, the, uh, or even they have an alarm system. Foundation detail. You, you gotta have to know what kinds of foundation we have. Most likely you'll see either concrete parameter, concrete slab foundation, or raised foundation. Partly we see the block brick or combination or a uh, permanent permanent definitely yeah usually all the foundation pretty much permanent if the mobile home then it's not permanent if mobile home has a foundation no that is the area you can put none because no foundation for mobile home mobile home actually sit on the jack they usually put on the they put on the stand or they put on hydraulic jack in between to support it, the whole mobile home so is it mobile home pretty secure on earthquake? Not really. When it shake, whew, they didn't really bolt it to anything because they have no foundation on mobile home. <clears throat> I would say the worst investment, worst investment is a mobile home because they didn't own the land and the land lease, they will usually increase 5% per year. That's a lot when you stay there. Long, long time. <clears throat> pier jack. Those are, you know, for the mobile home. That's, a, you know, the pier jack is supported. Pillar, post, or pier. Okay, same thing. Uh, quake brace, raised foundation. Raised foundation are those you can crawl the dam to the bottom. It's not the concrete slab. So all the uh, piping drainage could be on the bottom of a house. and. When they do the maintenance, they're going down in the house. That's a raised foundation. Those are the earlier era, probably from like the early 70 to 60, 
1950, 1950, those are house or even earlier. They are built in the raised foundation. Because concrete uh, slab foundation is not that popular back then. So most likely you'll see after 1970, late 1960, they start using the concrete foundation. Says so me tie down slab stack block <coughs> or stone or tie down. Usually you'll see the concrete uh, concrete slab or um, raised foundation, two different types. Property condition is up to what you think on that property. Is it additional or alteration? You need a building, is it building permit or is it a fixture? Fixture, those are, usually if we know that is a fixture, that means you, you need a lot of a TL, a TLC. What's a TLC? If you see the agent, they put TLC. What does it stand for? Nice world, nice words. That's right, but that three words stand for tender, loving care. <laughs> TLC. If you see the agent, they say, I need TLC. I say, oh, what, what, what mean TLC? I know you need a repair, but what repair? But I mean, people will ask, well, what's the TLC? Tender, loving care. <laughs> Sounds pretty nice, huh? Yeah, you need a remodel or repair or update. <laughs> Those are considered fixer. <clears throat> or repair cosmetic, repair major, termite clearances, turnkey. We all know, you see a lot of agents put turnkey, but what do you really know what's it mean, a turnkey? By the words, what do you see? Turnkey. Turnkey. It's actually moving ready. That means moving ready because you turn the key, you get it. Wow, okay, it's ready. So that is actually telling you it's more like a moving ready. <clears throat> well, pretty straightforward. Under construction, update or remodel. If, if it's been update or remodel, yes, you can put that. But that's not requirement. Sometimes it depends on, you know, everybody a uh, different point of view. So uh, you can, you can base on what you think. To do the check mark, or you can leave it blank. It's okay. Other structure. If you have anything, airplane hanger. Wow, that's awesome. Some of the houses they have an airplane hanger. Yeah, you you gotta have a you you gotta have a runway, and a close by an airport, right? No, sometimes maybe not airport, a, a runway. That's amazing. If your backyard has a runway for airplane, <laughs> then that's why you may have an airplane hanger. You park your airplane inside, like an airplane, airplane garage. That's an airplane hangar. Okay, um, aviary. Barn, we know that, gazebo. We may see some of uh, uh, the house, you know, may have a gazebo. Yeah, that's more gazebo. Greenhouse, guest house. Guest house attached or guest house detached. If they build another guest house, sometimes we may also call mother-in-law house. Mother-in-law. <laughs> well, for Caucasian, not sure. Did you know that? You know, um, did you notice that for Caucasian, if they call their dad as daddy, mommy, but if they call their in-law, they call their first name, especially. Husband side calling on wife side as the, uh, uh, they call it by first name. They didn't call it daddy or mommy. Yeah. To them, it's not going to happen. <laughs> so, and that's sometimes the guest, guest house, they, they call even mother in law's house. I mean, it's separated from the main house. Our building, sauna private, shade, the shed. A lot of people, they make, the shed is more like a storage room in the backyard. They make a they build it. Sometimes they, they build it pretty solid, you know, uh, even with the concrete foundation, with the wooden frame, you know, on that, make a, make a shop move now. It's a storage, that's a shed. Or you can buy the plastic one, huge one from Costco. 
自己拼起来。That's also a shit. Sport court private storage tennis court private. If you have a really you know huge house, two on the lot. <coughs> What do you mean two on the lot? Two house on the lot. My neighbor has a two. Actually, a, literally, it's a two house because one of my neighbor is they that that particular property is facing nine different neighbors. Why? Three here, three here, <laughs> three here, and the other facing the front. So it's a huge lot. Each fence, they are along with the three neighbors, <laughs> and they, it is though they build two houses on the lot, huge, two huge houses, and workshop. If you really, you know, put some some people turn in the garage as a workshop. Parking, assigned parking. If like townhouse, condo, they may have assigned parking, you know, by the number. Auto driveway gate, automatic. Boat, well, if you got boat parking, building storage, carport. We all know what's a carport, right? With a roof. Parking space with a roof, that's a carport. Nine. The if it's enclosed, that's called garage. If it's only the roof, that's a carport. Okay. Then parking space is empty, just a space, nothing on the top. So we got three different kind of parking. One is a garage, one is a carport, one is a parking or space. <clears throat> so you got carport, attach or detach, or circular driveway. What's a circular driveway? Some of a big house they have a circular driveway. 环形车道，有没有一个一个进去一个出来？ Okay, that's a circular driveway. You gotta, you gotta enough frontage and enough depth before you can have a circular driveway. Community garage. Okay, control entrance, converted garage, converted parking, or deck. <clears throat> Direct. Garage access. Well, usually, you know, our house have a direct garage access. Driveway. Then driveway, you know, is what kind they have? What kinds of driveway? Asphalt, bricks, combination, or concrete. Most of a house is concrete, but some of a house maybe asphalt. 柏油铺的那种 asphalt. 那个 driveway， 我们车子的那个车道上面，如果或是铺砖头 bricks or combination, concrete. With the uh, uh, and bricks or something, both gravel, paver, unpave. Gravel is what? 碎石子那种小碎石子铺在那个 That's a gravel. And paver and unpave, 就是看有没有铺就是了 Driveway is a blind down slope from the street or driveway level. 平的 Driveway upslope from street, either downslope from street or upslope from street. Typical Chinese, we don't really like to stay in the house on downslope. Yeah, on the street. 不好意思，这个我们。
在很容易出租要钱，出租要钱，连出租都要抢哦，连 lease the warehouse 都要抢，好辛苦哦。不为了钱，我们没办法，你知道。That's a good money。嗯，那因为 on a commercial property when you lease, that's a whole term, not just what do we do? We collect on the, the lease one year on the residential, right? Basically, year by year. But commercial, three years, five years, whole term. Yeah. Ain't got no 2%, 2.5%, okay? It's a 3%. <laughs> you do a soy offer than 2.5% or 2%, boy, somebody will yell it at you. <laughs> the other party. <laughs> 3% that's normal. Stand there. Yeah. Just like you see the lease, you know, I don't know how much we make on the lease. We still see quite often on 2% for the commission offer on the lease. Come on. You see 100 bucks, 500 bucks on the lease? You know, it's residential lease. That's pathetic. At least, you know, if a bigger house, I understand, probably 2.5%. Or maybe repeating client, maybe they will grant you for 1%. But I would like to keep it at everything on the lease. At least 3%, I talk to the owner. Well, how much you got to pay more? A couple hundred dollars. That's it. It's not going to be more. A whole lot more. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, we'll continue. On the uh, driveway, so the garage, we have front entry. What do you mean, the front entry? When you see the house, that's a front entry. Get in. You drive up, you know, into the house because the same side on the front. Rear entry, like some of a PUD townhouse, you know, like Orange County, they have an alley from the back. That's a rear entry. Side entry, side entry could be from the garage from the side or the garage. You gotta have to turn it this way. That's a side entry. Front entry is like you get on the street, boom, you get in. Get on the driveway and you turn. That's side entry to the garage. Some of the house they have a side entry. And pretty straightforward, single door, three door, or two door. That's mean garage door. By my house, the, the way they design is three door. So actually it costs me more. Why? I need three motor. <laughs> if it's a two door, you know, some of a two car, uh, two car garage is one door, the other single car garage, one door, that's only, you only need two motor, cheaper. Sometimes if like each one, <laughs> Like my house, each one is one car, then I need three motor. That's the way they design. So it's three door. Or um, usually we we didn't really see four doors. Usually what you see is like, do we have see the four car garage? Either they are tandem parking, two and two, or side by side, two, two double, two double door. Okay, like the one in Roland High, if the four car garage side by side. It's two double door, you know, on that, yeah. And garage door opener, gated. Golf car garage, wow, okay. So if you own the golf car right next to the golf course, you have a little tiny golf car garage to park your golf cart. You know, sometimes I see it on the golf car, it's not just a regular golf car. They, they are, they can have different logo, you know, Cadillac, Mercedes, you know, they put on the front. <laughs> they make it, you know, with the air conditioning too, you know, they even put the, the you know, the curtain. Oh, some of them, they are pretty luxury. Some of the golf course, when I play, it's like, wow, okay. Some of the retirement people, they really dress up their golf car, you know, install, uh, winter they have a heater, uh, summertime they have an air conditioning installed it. <laughs> I say, wow. Yeah, it's all electric now because I don't, I, I don't see, we still have a, a gas engine golf car anymore. I think they all eliminate that because pollution. pollution. Yeah, all electric now. Yeah. This is my golf car, my two feet. I'm walking. <laughs> You know, sometimes I give a discount for whoever riding, and it actually costs me almost the same when I'm walking. And then, uh, then the uh, starter asked me, are you still planning to walk? Yes. Okay. 
I need to exercise, so I'm walking. I paid about the same. They basically get the car free. Sometimes, like Diamond Bar Golf Course, I'm going to play tomorrow. Uh, they have a, a, the golf cart people. They have free lunch, free golf cart, and they paid about the same like me. And sometimes if the senior discount, they pay cheaper than I'm walking, just a green fee. I, I, I don't want to get a senior discount yet. <laughs> Even I know last time I went to McDonald's, people just charged me 99 cents. I'm at 75 cents for the coffee. Uh, you sure? Uh, yeah, yeah, 75 cents. Hey, you know, 75 cents, what's that? That's a senior grade. <laughs> yeah, and one time, you know, went to the supplementation, same thing. Oh, I, oh, oh, I forgot. A good, oh, wait, wait a minute. I got to have to find a coupon. Don't worry, I'll give you a senior discount. Oh. <laughs> well, well. Yeah, I wish. Yeah. Yeah. I, I tell me, I'll see you at this guy. Okay. And then what do I say? Thank you. Right? Yeah. Just like a couple of weeks ago, you know, people wish me a fa happy Father's Day. I have to say thanks. Even I don't have a kiss, right? It's okay. You don't have to tell them, I don't have any kids. Why do you wish me? Have don't explain it. Thank you so much. Why? Thank you so much for wishing my future. I'm going to be the future father. Who knows, right? <laughs> Medical is so advanced now. If you have a guarded uh, garage, it's like, well, okay. That's a, if you have a private car, guest garage, heated garage. We don't really have a heated garage here. Those are usually in heat, uh, you know, East Coast on the bottom. You get a heated garage. Meter. Huh? No driveway. Okay, townhouse, those are no driveway. Or condo if you have a garage but they have a really short <laughs> just you know get it. more like a walkway it's not even driveway uh some of a newer house same thing if you see the new building you know like a pud type or single family, they actually still no still no driveway um or none that mean it's actually no parking no garage nothing you know some of a building in downtown LA old building over 100 years old, literally they have no parking space. You buy those property, you have to lease or rent it on um, outside parking. Could be parking lot, you pay monthly, or you have to find someone's garage. Because those buildings, they may not even have a basement. Some of them, you know, the, uh, the old, over 100 years old, old building in downtown LA, we, you know, I've seen it. Absolutely no parking included. You think, what? In LA, no parking? No way. It is way. <laughs> Old building has no parking, in, especially downtown LA. It happened. Off site, off street, or on site, if it's away from the property, okay? Or any other, or any oversized garage. Yeah, possibly oversized parking. Sometimes they may have RV parking that's oversized, or maybe a SUV parking. If you like to park Hummer, yeah, regular car garage is not gonna fit in the, the H1. The H2 and H3, you, you can probably fit in tight, but not in H1, H1 is so wide. Uh, parking space, yeah, is sometimes, you know, or any permit and decal. Sometimes the townhouse, they may have, they may issue the uh, uh, permit or the decal for that. Uh, Porte, courtier. Hmm. I'll tell you the truth. I don't know what's that. <laughs> Anybody know? No. <laughs> Porte, courtier. Hmm. Hmm. Private, public, pull through. What, you pull through? Pull the car in? Hmm. Anyway, RV access and parking. Those are if you have a on the side, you know, next to the garage, or you have an extra driveway, long driveway, that's RV parking or access. RV cover, sometimes you have a cover, more like a carport, same thing, but for RV. RV gated, RV hookup, RV potential. Okay, what do you mean RV potential? You have a huge side yard. Can you convert the RV parking? Possible, that's an RV potential. Or if you have anything you want to put on the remark, you can put C remark. Share driveway. Okay, some, some of them, they may have shared driveway. 
side by side. So when we park, usually our garage, this parking this way, that's a side by side. But when you're the newer property, you may have the next one, a tandem back and forth. That's a tandem parking. If you park on the street, structure or subterranean, tandem cover, tandem parking or tandem garage. Sometimes you, you think it's a one car garage, actually it's pretty deep. That's a two car tandem parking. Some of the townhouses, they have that. Like in Fullerton, in Irvine, Orange County area, they have that. <clears throat> on a sign, on cover, valid, or workshop. Did you ever see that? You know, like Singapore, last time I see the TV. Yeah, the garage parked in your living room. You get in the elevator, so do your car get in the elevator. So you park it in front. So you can see the exotic sports car in front of your living room. Your two exotic sports car, Ferrari, Lamborghini, are just parked next to you. That's you know how they put in the garage to the, you know, the high rise building. They have their own elevator for the car. <laughs> when when you go down, you push the button. Your car can go down, waiting for you on the parking space, so you can drive out. So they didn't really have a basement or something like that parking space. They just put on the high-rise building, they put in the garage on the same level with your own home, yeah. That's something, yeah. And when you arrive home, your car arrived too, that fast. <laughs> okay, here, main level, bedroom, you see any? You put it right here, if you got one, and one, two, or two. Main level, bathroom, okay, usually have one. Uh, some of the condo, they may not have it. Like the one in Yes Plaza, two bedroom, one bath. Where's that bath? Upstairs. Downstairs, he got no bath. So guests come over, <laughs> you want to get a bathroom? Upstairs. That's the only bathroom. Yeah. The townhouse right next to Yes Plaza. Okay. That's a small two bedroom uh, townhouse. Is it attached garage? Yes or no? Okay. Uncover space or number of remote, remote control. Garage space. That means it's you, how many garage space and how many carport space, if you have a carport, or any RV parking dimension. Sometimes people would like to know how, how big is the parking. Sometimes they can only park the boat. Sometimes you can park the bus. It depends, you know, how wide, how deep on your parking. Direction face. Oh, that really, really concerned to someone, right? Where's the front door or the main house? Where's the front facing at? What direction? Don't worry, all kinds of, all direction here, okay? Choose one, <laughs> all right? <laughs> Eight different direction, just choose one. Did you ever see that, you know, I, I have a, a buyer before, they can only buy the house in particular direction on the front door. How do I show them a property? Every property before I show, I have to look at a satellite view. See where the front door is, which direction they are facing. So once they get in the house, they have to look at where's the bedroom facing. I don't, which I don't know. You have to get in to look at it. But at least I eliminate one is they give me the, the only particular direction, front door direction. Oh, wow. Well. <clears throat> Waterfront feature, uh, we hardly see any waterfront house here. <laughs> yeah, but that's, you know, if you do deal with that um, across the road from the lake and ocean, okay, that's cool. Uh, bay front, beach access, beach front, canal front, creek, fishing and community. Wow, okay, including duck, lagoon front, lake, lake front, lake right. Some of them, if, if like Irvine, they do have artificial lake. If they do have it, you know, it could be. Uh, marina in community. You know, parking the boat, your yacht. Uh, navigable water, ocean access, ocean front, ocean side on freeway, ocean side on highway. Pond, okay, reservoir. In com uh, we don't really like reservoir in community. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> Uh, riverfront, seafront, seawall, stream, waterfront with home across the road. 
So if you have a street here, cross the road, that's a waterfront. Yeah. Now those are the those are gotta be a nice house with the in front of water. Haven't get a chance to deal with those yet. <laughs> Those have got to be millions and millions. Okay, sewer. <clears throat> we all know that, you know, the sewer either uh, is a septic or the cesspool, conventional uh, septic, engineer septic, holding tank, mount septic. Put it this way. If you don't know what kind of septic, then don't answer. Because they have all different kinds of septic. and unless you have to find out what kind of septic tank you know a seller will telling you, sometimes seller doesn't even know. So what do I put? If I, it's a septic tank, I will put septic tank unknown. I don't know what type of septic tank, but I know it's septic. Unless you know you check mark. You don't know, leave it there. But since this is a yellow area, you've got to at least check one. So if you, it's a septic or the, uh, <clears throat> Okay, per test on file and test require private sewer, public sewer. Either I will mark septic type unknown. I don't know. Do play safe. Then if the buyer like to know, then you have to find out yourself. And that's you need to hire the specialist to do the uh, sonar. Actually, because underground, right? You have to use a sonar. <laughs> To see, you know, what's underground, and they, the, uh, the, the uh, specialist, the inspector, they can tell you what type of a septic underground. And sewer apply for the permit. Sewer assessment, sewer unbound, and sewer is paid. Yeah, usually sewer, maybe we pay with the water bill. Shear septic, solid analysis septic, or simply unknown. If you don't know it's a sewer or septic, simply put unknown. Then I don't know. Sellers, I don't know. I never pump my septic. Oh boy. How many years? Well, years after year, continue using it. <clears throat> Did you ever thought, okay, if you think on the, uh, let's put it this way, one time experience to me in the Hacienda Height, uh, older area, Hacienda Height, I guess, 7th Street area, they all are surface street. We all assuming it's a sewer, not really. Some of the house, 1960, they still have septic. Yeah, they have a street, neighbor sewer. How come mine is septic? Because they never hook it up. They never hook it up with, a, uh, with the uh, a sewer. Can they, do they have an option to hook it up? Yes. Once they hook it up, they need to pay a water company or a, or a county or city to, for hook up the sewer, you know. Annually, they put in the property tax or they put in the water bill. But if you do not hook it up, you still continue to use your sewer tank. It's okay. So if those area like around the 7th Street, never assume it's a sewer. <laughs> they may still have a septic tank. And that's an extra cost if your buyer want to connect it to the sewer. Because the sewer from the main house to the uh, the drainage, that's to the street, depending on how deep of your front yard. How, you know, you go to deep it, you know, take it pretty deep, probably about six feet deep before you can see, you can hook it up with the sewer to the county. So that's thousands of dollars. That's an extra cost for buyers. So that's, you gotta have to figure that out. So you do not assume that. <clears throat> so, you know, even one of my buyers say, can we uh, secretly hook it up? I say, uh -huh. let me dig it up, you hook it up. And without telling <laughs> the a county or city, I don't think that's a good idea because that means your record will never change because on county record or city record, they were still showing septic. Okay, but actually you only change your sewer. I said, when? If there's somebody caught you. Oh boy. <laughs> so but I tell them, don't do that. If you really want to do the sewer, tell the city or county, hook it up legally. So your title can be changed to sewer. Otherwise, later on, it's always a trouble there. Yeah, you you telling the uh, the next buyer, oh yeah, it's a sewer, but the title is septic. Well, yeah, we hook it up secretly. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, typical Chinese, they don't want to pay city even a couple hundred dollars. 
basically it's a permit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Windows. Window feature, we got the uh, uh, atrium, bay window, blind, there's all different kinds of window, assessment window, custom covering, double panel window. If you know, it's a double pen. panel. Uh, drags, curtain, energy star window. If you know, if you don't know, don't mark it. It's okay. Uh, French, Mulholland, uh, Muller. Uh, uh, garden window, insulator window, uh, jill side, lavender, low E. That's a low emissive window. That's more like, see, this is kind of repeating energy star window and a low E window. It's about the same. Um, Polandium and plantation shutter. If you know, you know, what kinds of stuff, if you don't know, it's okay. You know, it's not like so important. Why? It's because when you took the photo, people, people will see it. Those are within expecting you will know everything. Roller, sh roller shade, screen, shutter, skylight, solar screen, solar tinted window, stained glass, storm window, tinted window, triple panel. Okay. And wood frame window. Yeah, we I, I know there's some someone selling a triple panel window, three glass. So I I don't know why, but I mean I think it's kind of overkill. Double panel is good enough. But sometimes the low E, the double panel, the real nice double panel actually is vacuum inside between two glass. A cheaper one is not vacuum, so that's why it cannot really retain the heat. So if you talk about energy saving or uh, low E, actually it's a vacuum, suck all the air out between two glass. But when you see the condenser, you see that sometimes the double panel window, they start seeing a moisture inside. What happened? The rubber seal leak. <laughs> that's it. It's no more, va no more vacuum. The, the moisture get in. So either you might have to, you know, you gotta have to remove the whole window, have somebody repair it. Otherwise, you know, <clears throat> how can you remove the moisture? You know, once the seal has been broke, then if you clean, even, you know, you can clean it up, but next time it still happen. Uh, water source, is it private or public? Pretty much, agriculture will, if it's a whale. So you can mark usually either public or private, unless you're pretty sure it's a whale. So some of a horse property in the middle of nowhere, that's a whale water. Private, usually we got a public. Private means you gotta own the water stock. Last time when I deal with it, like uh, up like upland, north side of upland, they have, they have to uh, before you turn on the water, you need the water stock. Those are considered private water because each own each residence on the upside uh a north side of an upland those custom home area they own the water company so there's more like a private water company so it's a private water most of them is public okay finish on this land and terms you look at the on the real list and you will find out um uh, lots which lot number and if a single family, therefore it's one unit, okay? Number of a unit in community, if it's a townhouse, if you know how many townhouse, how many units, either you can call the HOA to find out how many units, or sometimes I got a stupid way is I count it, you know, through the uh, satellite view. <laughs> <laughs> Zoning, they will type it in, you know, if you put in a parcel number, you'll see that. And the track number, track number usually is a map. Plat map number, that's a track number. Those are everything is on the real list. Later I will show you. Those number, you find it on the you know text record. So those are, they can be typed in. Some of them, building model, text model, whatever the make. I don't know what kinds of make for the house. Usually it's a manufacturer home or mobile home. We know what brand or what make. But usually a house, I don't know. We don't have any make. 
Uh, builder's name, if you know who built the house originally. Tax track, will depth, will gallon per minute. If you do have a well, that's the place you fill in. How deep is the well and how many gallon pump out per minute? Well pump, a horsepower, because you need a motor to pump it out. And do you have any well report? Because the well report has to be certified. And when you sell it, because usually the buyer will ask for the well report because they need to uh, require to take a look, any mineral, any bacteria, uh, any contamination, because uh, underground water. Any assessment, okay. Usually I will put on um, no. Do we have a special assessment? Yes, usually we have it. And the real is more or less 200, 300, or two, 3,000, or even more. Mellow roofs, usually use if the, uh, uh, some of them, you see the special assessment tax over 1,000, usually they have a mellow roofs on that. Sewer assessment, sewer bound. But you know what? Sometimes I get lazy, I put unknown. <laughs> Why? Let buyers check on it. You, you, you take a look on the real list yourself. It's not obligation by seller or the listing agent anyway. If you have any HOA fee, and how, freak, how frequently pay for the HOA fee? You have monthly, quarterly, or annually. If you deal with the Orange County, sometimes they may just have one HOA fee. They have a small community. They have some co uh, pay monthly. And if a bigger community, they maybe pay quarterly. Sometimes in the city, they pay annually. So actually, you have three HOA. Yeah, some of a some of the property they do have a three HOA like that. So that's why you have HOA fee, HOA name, and what HOA fee too? Well, second HOA. Hardly you see three HOA, but that's why they only give you the space for fill it in, two HOA, and also their phone number. If buyer has any question, listing agent, you tell better yet, whatever the question, you call HOA. See, for like townhouse or BOD, I say, can I build a patio? You ask HOA, I can answer you. My neighbor, they have it, how come they not allow? Well, because they probably built it before. And they're okay, now they are not. I cannot answer you. It doesn't mean you see neighbor has it, you can build it right now. It's hard to say. <clears throat> HOA amenity. If you see, if any, HOA have a pool, spa, sauna, fire pit, barbecue, outdoor cooking area, picnic area, playground, dock. Those are more like a water, okay? Water dock, pier, boat house, golf, tennis, paddle tennis, racquetball court, Okay, and it also sports court, other court, biking trail, hiking trail, horse trail. You know, some of Warner House, they have what, the trail behind it, right? Those are, if you like to put it, yeah, you can do it. Uh, pest control, yeah, HOA sometimes, you know, they including the pest control. Jogging track, gym, exercise room, clubhouse, villa room, cart room. Banquet facility, recreational multi-purpose room, meeting room, storage area, common RV parking, kennel, cable TV, clubhouse pay, uh, concierge. Well, like downtown LA high rise building, did they have a concierge service to park your car? Yeah, that's it. HOA pay for that. But imagine how expensive the HOA. Every time you park my car, you gotta, well, I gotta give me the tips. I don't know. Yeah. Every day. Be be before I get down, you, you, you call. I say, um, which number, you know, I'm getting down. So they can park their car in front, you know, by, by the time you get down the first floor. Like, you know, I know this, the one I saw, you know, some of a high rise building in downtown Nokia Center. Those are the, uh, uh, either the cheaper HOA, you park your own car to the garage. The concierge service, like the uh, one on the Rich Carlton residency above the Marriott Hotel, because they're using the same concierge with the Marriott Hotel. 
So that's why you call and they pull out the car. They took out the car and they have two concierge, you know, to open the door for you when you arrive. Ooh, each door, they open. Okay. It's not going to be cheap. Yeah. Uh, earthquake insurance, electricity, gas insurance. See if the HOA included. See if those are if the HOA include insurance. Yeah, most likely. Uh, gas maybe depends. I don't think I ever never see the <laughs> HOA cover electricity. Uh, maintenance ground. Yeah, trash. Mm -hmm, most likely. Certainly not all utility. If you really cover all utility, you can put that. Sewer, most likely. Water, maybe. Do you pay annually, monthly, or quarterly? So HOA, you know, they depend. Or semi-annually. Any pet rule? Possibly. Some of the area, they can allow dog. Some of the area, not allow dog, cat only. So you got to have to see if any pet rule. Or pets not permitted. The whole community just not allow pets. But it's really hard to determine. Is a goldfish considered a pet? Uh, turtle? Yeah. But usually they say it's more like a dog or cat. I got a client, you know, they have, uh, their pet is, you know, for a lizard, frog. Now they're adding one more snake. <laughs> but in the cage. <laughs> not running around one. <laughs> Pets permitted or permitted type, any weight limit. Sometimes the dog, you know, the community, they do have a, a pet, you know, for the weight limit, not too big. Call for rule. Okay, outside property management. If HOA, sometimes they manage, but, you know, professional outside of management. Okay, that's outside. Not, own, not managed by their own uh, residents over there. Guarded, security, control access, if they have a main service. Some of the community, the hot water is included because they got a, a community. They do running on the gas, but hot water, actually, they run on the boiler, you know, to uh, maybe a unit they share. So that means hot water included. But the tenant just pay for the uh, burner, you know, for the gas, uh, for the stove and furnace. But hot water, you don't have to pay for it. hot water. Sometimes, you know, some community, they include it because they don't have a boiler at each unit. Okay, land and fee. If your property is land lease, if you list it, sooner or later, I may have one because um, I, I helped them to purchase before. Last time they are thinking about a sell that hey, okay, then if it's land lease, then I gotta tell them, okay, when is a renewal day? When the lease is up, the land lease, okay? When is a lease amount annually? Our uh, land lease amount, how frequently you pay? So I put the dollar amount, and then I will put annually. Or any land lease transfer fee. Yeah, absolutely. You do have some transfer fees. So it's not gonna be free. Transfer the different ownership, it gotta have cost some fee. Huh? A uh, few hundred dollars. Sometimes the land lease, you know, um, <clears throat> some people doesn't like it, but think about this way it's more like, think about it in China, it's a land lease. <laughs> few, you, well, it depends. I see the one on the like Santana condo or uh, like Arcadia, some of a condo, there is a land lease, but their HOA fee is higher because they actually including the property tax into it. But I helped a, a client purchase investment property like the units with the land lease. Property tax, they'll pay by the buyer, the owner, not the land owner, as a building owner, but on the property tax, they showing two names the property of uh, the building owner and the land owner both. But who pay for? Well, definitely. Because the land lease fee, not even enough to pay for the property tax because land lease cheap. Say $3,600 and that's a $1 million uh, building for units. At one million, you know how much it's gonna cost for the, 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 the property tax? Well, $12,000 annually, roughly. And the land lease is only 3,600 annually. There's no way to tell the 
let the owner say, oh, you pay for the property tax. Yeah. So those are pretty clear, you know. And if you if you do not pay the property tax, then landowner has a right to foreclose, right? Well, you ruin mine, right? Because the uh, if the the uh, building owner did not pay the property tax, then the county can after landowner. Then landowner said that I'm going to foreclose it. No. Mobile home, why the park fee is so expensive? If we talk about like the one in Rolling High, easily over $1,000 now. I think it's about $1,100 per month now. Pretty expensive. You think mobile home is cheap? Yeah, $70,000, $80,000, but their, their community fee is $1,000 or $1,100. The uh, property tax, yes. That including property tax and trash and the management fee because they do have the manager on site, right? Yeah. Huh? What city? Land lease. Um, last time I did it, you know, uh, some of them, I would say what I can see on the MLI, sometimes you see the land lease, from some of Orange County area, Santa Ana, Anaheim, City of Orange. Um, Arcadia too, yeah, Arcadia, some of Arcadia, and Irvine. Some of a uh, property in Turtle Rock is a land lease. Their HOA fee is easily seven, $800 or even $1,000. It's a land lease. Arcadia usually is a, a condo. It's a land lease. Yeah. So that's why those property is cheaper. Don't get excited. Wow, this is so cheap. Yeah, because you don't own the land. That's why it's cheap. And if a land lease purchase, yes or no? Um, usually, I doubt it. You know, the uh, the landowner will sell it to the uh, building owner. If they plan to sell the land, can they sell it to them? Yes. Did you, did you know that in the state of Hawaii, the land actually owned by the native Hawaiian? Or pretty much, I cannot say all of them because they actually selling some of the land to the homeowner. Like some of the high rise building, they will uh, purchase the land from the native, uh, I don't know how they separate it, who, or who own which property is, or uh, they say maybe the uh, uh, state owned that property and they share it to the native Hawaiian. Um, they could sell the, some of the land already, some of the high rise building, they will ask the homeowner. They have to, when they want to purchase they, the whole building, all the residents have to spend the money to purchase that particular land. So each unit could be like 300, 400, depending on how big is your unit, then you get a proportion you know, on the land and you need to pay just by the land. I already own the building. Well, yeah, now you buy the land separately. I already spent over a million dollars by the unit. Yeah, now you buy, you know, spend, spend another three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars just by the, a piece of land, undivided interest land, <laughs> because you live in a high rise building. Otherwise, you pay the land lease into the HOA. If you know on the uh, high school, sure, or you just put in the school district. I usually don't want to put on a middle, junior high, middle school or junior high or elementary school because I don't know. Even I know it's close, even I know which elementary school or junior high it belongs to. But if, if that particular school is full, you, you live next to it, you still have to wait until they have opening. High school, they have no choice because like, okay, Roland Unified School, this particular one, and go to Roland High. I don't think they, they go to Nogales. It's too far. Or if Diamond Bar or Walnut, if you're down the city, you only have one high school, right? Okay, too bad. You just have, no matter how many students, Diamond Bar High School got to accept it. You know, one time the uh, Walnut High School, just a freshman, um, ninth grader, last time I see, one year they reach almost 1,000. 
That's a lot. 900 something freshmen get in. They just have to accept it. Yeah. Just happened that year. It's got so many students, so many freshmen. So every class is overcrowded <laughs> on that particular year. That's what I heard. Yeah. Uh, possession. So it depends, you know, if you, you will deliver to the house is a close of escrow, close plus, plus what? Plus whatever the day, negotiable. And plus one day, COE plus two days, COE plus three days. You, that's what you check. Like this particular seller is negotiable because they need to rent back for two months. So that's why I said negotiable and see remark. Current financing. If you know, you know what they're financing, you can look at it, you know, through the uh, uh, real list and tell them and say, okay, which the, uh, it could be conventional or uh, whatever finance may be. Listing term, what kinds of buyer you're looking at finance buyer, cash, cash to the new loan or conventional. Um, some of them, if you did, you're not really want to accepting FHA, FHA loan or just, you know, or VA loan, you can just uncheck. If they come out, if they come in, that's fine. You hardly see FHA loan or VA loan property a uh, borrow the buyer buying a Roland High <laughs> or Hacienda High. It's just different area. They don't really have those buyers. This bottom is for mobile home. The mobile home, they do have a serial number. They have a decal number. They still have a license number because it's a mobile, so they still have a license plate. So. The bottom section, this is uh, for the mobile home. Okay, this is an area for the office and MLS. You put on the commission here, how many percent? If you are the dual or variable com compensation, yeah, if you're the dual agent. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, don't, I hate to answer yes, but this one, yes. I gotta have to give away 1% if, you know, if I'm the dual agent. <clears throat> Buyer agency com uh, remark. If you have any compensation remark, say okay. If by sometime any bonus or something, you can list it here. You should leave it blank. And what's the listing day started? Uh, listing service is. I always put full service. Some of the entry only. What do you mean entry only? Some of the listing brokerage they just enter. The information. So whenever you want to show, whenever you want to deal with anything, you deal with seller directly. So they they just pay for the flat fee you put on the MLS. That's it. So don't call them for commission. How much? You know, sometimes you have to sign it another a single party compensation with the seller, because even they put on MLS if the seller did not honor, what can you do? Yeah. So those are just play safe, you know, <clears throat> or limited service. Well, you get discount broker, maybe you get limited service. You want to find 1% of Riffin, we, you get limited service, <laughs> not full service. Is it the for sale sign on the property? Okay. And listing agreement, yeah. We only signing the exclusive right to sell. I never sign an exclusive agency or exclusive right to, with exception, or open. Yeah, open listing, no way. Yeah. Any net listing, net listing is more like, let's say seller say, this is how much I wanna get, I don't care how much you sell. Then then you, then you have to calculate backward. This is how much I get, you calculate backward through escrow, your commission on top of whatever the net, what they want. Yeah. Or if it's a probate. So here, contingency, I would say seller need to rent back maximum two months after close of escrow. So that's a contingency. <clears throat> Showing instruction, you basically now is type, need to type it in yourself. It's a vacant, I would pay, put a vacant, go direct. This one is appointment only because seller still live inside and either text me or using the showing time. You guys all know how to use the showing time now? Download it through your smartphone or iPad. Or you can, you know, click it through the uh, uh, MLS. They have a showing time to set up the appointment. So actually, they will text, email, and call the listing agent three-way. 
so to to try to get you and you can actually call the showing time they can call physically live operator call the uh, seller or call the listing agent to set up an appointment for you and that's 24 hours service they, they sometimes say oh i have to call tomorrow i understand now it's 11 o'clock in the night yeah <laughs> the operators i have to call tomorrow morning to sell it yeah i understand <laughs> but it's a live operator yeah is it free well actually what do you pay for it through where through our board through our mls do you just just pay another mls fee that's a june now right you have to pay july third quarter <laughs> They only ask you for the third quarter fee now. So if you have any lockbox, fine. You can put lockbox location or any lockbox type. The Supra, what we got here is the, uh, for, put it right here, Supra. But technically, if we want to put the lockbox, according to the MLS rule, if we put a lockbox, it has to be Supra lockbox. They, to them, last time I learned, I'm not, I'm not so sure did they change the, the rule, but if we put combo, that's not really allowed. It should be a Supra. So they can be tracked. We can be tracked. Because combo is very vulnerable. Don't try to. I know why people put a Supra, because they are cheap. They don't have a Supra. Or they are run out of Supra lockbox. Super super lockbox costs probably 150 bucks now, okay. And each listing agent you have to buy it for your own, unless you want to borrow from your coworker. <laughs> but that actually you can track whoever get it. You just get on the super e key website, you know. Then you can track whoever enter. And the super lockbox version, what the one we got the blue one is a super BTLE. Those are with the Bluetooth and laser eye, both, okay, both. <clears throat> and you can enter here lockbox serial number. Each, each lockbox, we have an eight digit of a serial number. That's belong to a particular listing agent. Or any phone description, if you wanna put it right here, or the sequence, you know, you call a listing agent. This part is if you are ignore or you don't want to upload a photo or anything uh seller try and tell you i'm not going to put a public website but mls is okay they, but that means you gotta have to let the seller sign s-e-l-i seller excluded marketing in the internet you're gonna need to sign that form then you can change it then also you need to email it or fax it into the board or the mls and tell them and say hey i do have this form that's why don't put it on the any public website. So you can only see the uh, MLS, but you won't see it on Zillow or Trulia or Riffin. That's a private sector. Extreme, uh, some of the owner, they just, okay, I'll let you do the MLS, but not others. Because those are others, actually, they can see through, you know, any, you know, it's open public and they just don't feel comfortable, you know, showing their photos or their for sale information. Even they just, they just don't know, don't want to let the neighbor know they are for selling. So they sometimes they don't even allow us to put to put on the for sale sign on the street or on their front yard. Only agent can see it. Especially if you deal with a short sale, people they don't want to you know let anybody know they are short sell the property. Private remark: Those are you put it in whatever you want, you know, unless by the agent. Those are usually, I put it, you know, on the requirement, how to show, then we say, and see the supplemental attachment for the copy additional 330 square footage, because that is, they do have a permit. So I, I upload it to the supplemental area. Not just the photos itself, I also upload the permits, the copy of permits. So people doesn't have to go through, you know, the county or something, because I went there already. Yeah, before I took the listing, I got the copy, everything. then you can tell them what do you want to do, you know, submit the offer to which email address, everything, okay? Then your, certainly, your listing, your MLS ID, your email, and if you do have a co-listing agent, you can put it right here.
And if you have a list team, called list team, it, those are individual on the top. And this is if, if you are with the team. We don't have any green. Uh, I haven't I, actually. I had never deal with that any with the uh, uh, energy saving house power production type mm -mm. open house. This is an area you need to put it in when, every time you want to do the open house. Why? Because only you put it right here. So everybody can see an open house section and also Zillow, Trulia, or Redfin, or Realtor.com, they can actually copy this uh, information into their website. So everybody would know um, the open house. Don't just put an agent remark because agent remark will, gen will not generate to other public websites. So you make sure you do it right here on the uh, uh, open house, okay? What day and time? And actually, who is showing? They're showing agent. We'll put on the, the MLS ID. Okay, we'll finish all the input here for the uh, listing. That's, you know, for the residential. Um, certainly, if you enter into the lease and so the income pro property is very similar, but I will not go over, you know, on that, okay? Because this one, we probably, you know, focus on the most for the residential house or property. Any more question? No? Okay. If not, then we'll just go through the real list. That just, you know, I, that, I, that's why I just, you know, pick on any property. Uh, let me pick a better property. Maybe, let me see if I can find it with the Melo Roos one. <laughs> Let's see. Try to find any Chino Hills one. Okay, let's see if a star pass. This one may not have it though. Too small. Oh, well, yeah, maybe. Okay, here we go. I'm using as example here. First of all, when we sign a listing, you gotta have to see, okay, who is the owner? Right? Sometimes, you know, the owner's name, if the uh, has different than the, your client say, wait a minute, who's this person? Uh, you better give me the good answer because it looks like your name is different than, or even last name, who, who, who's that person, for example. Um, and their tax bill address and see if they are still living there. So you can double check or sometimes the rental property, they may not have a same tax address. They may mail it to somewhere else. So you know it's a rental property most likely, okay? And what's the vesting? Oh, they will see it, husband and wife. And it's owner occupied, yes. And when I just look at, here's a track number, that's a, where you enter into the, the land and the feature on that, that you enter the track number. Yeah, for the tax one. And this is, you know, for, uh, so you have a tax number right here. I'm mean, a track number. School district is Chino. Chino Hill and Chino, they are in the same school district. So it's Ch Chino Unified, Chino City. This is a parcel number. You double check on it. Don't put it wrong. Legal description, you'll find it through a lot number. Sometimes they put a lot here. So it's a lot 89. Track 13601, same right here, okay? In a common area, AKA, okay? Because this is more like a PUD type area. Okay, here's assessment tax. You have value for total, value for land, and value for improvement. What's that? Total mean is the total, the whole thing, land and the building. If you want to separate it, you will see the land, what's the land value? What's the improvement value? So you can look at the proportion. Newer house, newer development area, The uh, uh, what you see here is more value on the building than land. If you see the Santa Monica, West LA area, totally reverse. More value on the land and less value on the building. 
Why? Because land will appreciate. Building is like our car will depreciate. The older the building, they have no value. But where's the value go to? Land. If you see those 100 years old build, building, yeah, where's the value? Go to land, almost everything. So you come out with a total. And those are, you know, assess change if the value change from 2015 to 2016, 2016 to 2017. So they change the value. What do you, usually the county, they change what? Average 2%, okay? Even I know the market probably changed 10%, but they only change one and a half to 2%. Yeah. As long as you own that property, they will not increase a lot. But when you sell it, boom, either the selling price or the market price, they will love you, realtor. But because they can collect more property tax <laughs> when the market is up. But when the market is down, okay, on a property system 13, they will actually, adjusted accordingly to the market price. Did you guys, you know, we feel like you, your tax, property tax are reduced like a year 20, a 20, a 2010, 2009? Yeah, I did. But I know on 2013, they gone up quick, right away, yeah. That's in, totally, suddenly increased like, you, you think like they're increased 10% or 15%, well, they just back to the normal. Because if they go back to the uh, uh, your previous height, they will jump back. Then after you the previous level, then you start getting to two percent, one and a half percent, keep on gradually going up. So if we reach a twenty twenty, we may have another dip. I don't know, maybe. A lot of people were thinking, you know, you may, you know, the market is probably going down right now. Well. I cannot really see it right now because at this moment, our real estate price still going up, mortgage rate still going up, so do the stock market going up. Those are we've never seen it before in American history. Never. Yeah. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Those are, you know, that's why, you know, I cannot really see any data or even the unemployment rate is low. So that's why the, uh, um, most likely what I can see is still going up gradually for the pricing. And that's a tax rate. How do you figure out the tax rate on the property here? I know a lot of people, you probably will ask me, usually how do we figure it out? How do we do? Let's use a 2017. $6,583, that's a property tax. How do you figure it out? Their regular rate on the property tax. Because the special assessment tax, this is a fix. That's why I want to use this as an example. This rate is fixed. Fixed. Only the base rate go by with your purchase price or selling price. So what do you do? 6583 minus 2325 divided by 40, 432,737. What is roughly? 1%. That particular 1% will go by the uh, um, selling price. So if your buyer telling them, what's my, what's my new tax? So you use that formula. If you buy, for, for example, this, this property selling is 629, let's say 600. 1% is 6,000. So the new tax is gonna be $8,325, right? Because you need to add back the 2325. Because when you minus, that is going to be four thousand, uh, four thousand two hundred, and the uh, uh, four thousand two hundred uh, fifty, fifty-seven, well, fifty-eight dollars. 
So 42, 53, uh, 58 divided by 432,737, that's about 0.99%. Let's say round it up 1%. So that's a new tax that now you're using it. Um, then you, you know, that's what you do the calculation. So that's the new tax gonna be. So you'll be able to tell your uh, buyer what's a new tax. Including the special assessment tax, it is. So you use this number minus this one, divided by the 432,737. That's, it's about 0.99%. Then, then if you purchase this property, they are selling for say 600,000 to round it up. No, it's gonna be like what? They say 6,000. This is assessed value, I know. But when you selling the property, what did they do? Either market value or purchase price. They will charge you the uh, the new tax. So, no, no, no. You don't use assessed value. Assessed value that's only for the previous, of the current, the, for the seller or the previous owner. Put it this way. The new owner gotta have a new tax. Suddenly they will jump from total sixty five eighty three to. $8,200. So that's how you figure it out. No, special assessment tax, that's the legal way to call. Melo Rules is the two senator named previously they, because they proposed this special assessment. One is called Melo, the other one called Roos, their last name. That's why it's called Melo Roos. That's how the Melo Roos come out. They proposed it back to 1985, I believe. Yeah. They started uh, practice since 1988. So what is actually the Melo Roos? A thousand? Because this is a unified bond, this is for the school. So this too, actually it's a Melo Roos. This is a school. Chino Hill land. So those are city tax. From here, the third one, all the way to the bottom, you know, Chino Hill Street swept. Those are the city tax. But Chino Hill Unify, Chino Hills, you know, on this, number three, number five, this is a metal roost. About $1,500. If you really want to say the metal roost. This part, rest of them is a city tax. Then what do you, when, when I just figured out the 0.99%, what's that? That's a San Bernardino County tax. San Bernardino County is actually slightly cheaper than LA County. LA County is about 1.01 to 1.02, depends. Without adding, I mean, 1.1%, uh, I'm sorry, not 1.01. 1 1.1%, 1 that's for the LA County. LA County, they are the richest, but they also collect a little bit more than other county. The city tax, they're still about like 0.1% uh, average out still, but rest of them is a county tax different. But that's only for residential. Commercial property, it may be different. They will collect differently by the city. City may have a higher commercial tax than county, they still collect the same, but city, they wanna collect more for the commercial property. So sometimes you, like for example, El Monte, they have a higher from, uh, we average out about 1.2% give and take for the residential. But like El Monte, they are about probably 1.5. The highest I can see, you know, at almost to 1.8. Most of them you'll see 1.5% for the commercial property. And that's different between South El Monte and El Monte. Just like Pasadena and South Pasadena. It's a two different city. It's not South side Pasadena. So you gotta make sure. Southern Pasadena is not South Pasadena. <laughs> It's different. Okay, continue. The characteristic. So we all know how to calculate the property tax now, right? Okay. The characteristic, you will see, what's the county land use? Single family. If you see, oh, somebody here, this is a single family, and suddenly you see the title is condo. Uh-oh, what's telling you? Condo, remember last time we, we see that? Okay. Yeah, it's a two parcel. Well, that's a huge, what, is, what, what's the title? Condominium. Then condominium is not gonna be same value like single family, period. 
So if you talk about you buying a $938,000 condo in Rolling High, too much. Ouch. But some of the Chinese, you know, they don't know and they just bought it. As an agent like me, I will tell them this title is condominium. You can buy, it's okay. But you have to know the value is not going to be as good as single family. But it's your choice. You want to buy the brand new one? Go ahead. Like the one at $938,000. The one in Roland Heights. Yes. Yeah. But I mean, I already disclosed. A seller, they, they, you know, basically why they have to disclose? Because they have to give you the, the, uh, the uh, HOA if it's a condo. But do you think, I believe seller, they know it's a condo. They may purposely hide it, but whose responsibility do you find out? Buyers and buyer's agent. Listing agent and seller, they're not obligated. I know, they are related. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like the, uh, you need to find out, you know, for the buyer. Yeah. So you'll see the S SFR and the acre, that's a 0 0.9. And the last size, 4141. Modern. And the building square footage, that's, you know, total living area. And the gross, wait a minute, where's that gross area coming out from? 23, 23. What's a building square footage and gross area? Where's that coming from? Yes, they're adding the garage. That's a gross area. So that's why if you add it from 1857 and 466, it come out with 2323 here. There's a garage space. And you also, they, they are pretty detailed. They even put on a second floor square footage. You get a newer building, they can be able to you know distinguish everything. The older, uh, building, you don't, you cannot even know, you know, you don't know what's the second floor for the square footage. Where? Bedroom, yeah. Total bed, total room, six. Okay, here we go. Title is three bedroom, but what the listing agent see, four bedroom. Sometimes I don't know why the listing agent, they even including the bonus room into it, but the bonus room doesn't have a closet. It's not considered a bedroom. But that's why, you know, every time when we show the property, we kind of show it here. Um, it's a three bedroom, three bath. Just like, you know, I, I, my client liked the house and I know that fourth bedroom downstairs has been addition, converted from maybe in, in close patio. They converted it pretty nice. It's actually, they even it got a tile roof, everything, you know, they adding everything. I don't know how long ago they, they added, but, my client likes it, what's my next step? Go to CD. I need to find out because the title, the text says is showing three bedroom, but actually clearly it's a four bedroom. Uh, that's in, no, no, uh, the room, you know, usually they can including um, a living room, family room or kitchen. So at this property, I'm pretty sure they only have one gray room and one, Kitchen. They may not have a family room or something. So that's why they say, oh, no, no, they, they do. Three room. Fam a living room, family room, and kitchen. So it's a three room plus a three bedroom. Six. Total six room. Because living room and family room, that still is a room. <laughs> I didn't say bedroom, but it's a room. Well, kitchen, they still consider a room. Then how many baths? Doesn't matter half bath or full bath. They they all they don't have a half here. So that's why they, they, they you know, this one they are pretty clear, but the older one they don't. This one they say two full baths and one half bath. Because this is a newer building, so the title can be more clear. Second floor, even the garage space, they all, you know, uh, disclose on that. And they do have a what? Family room. See that? One family room, one fireplace. Okay, and next to it, conditioning, water, sewer. I can see that. Okay, it's a public service. That you mean you definitely hook it up. It's not septic. If it's septic, sometimes on the title they will say septic. Heater type central, so central heating. Cooling type refrigeration. Garage type attached garage. 
garage space. And the parking type is attached frame garage. So they actually do have a garage space framing. Parking space is two. Roof type is tile. Construction type, certainly it's a frame. Year built, then you that's what you see it. Why they have a year bill, an effective year bill? Year bill is original build it. That year bill, if you do have addition, then that means the addition on what year they will put it. That's why it will say effective year bill. See if you have a porch, porch area, how big? Oh, 95 square footage. Patio or porch area, porch type. And building, one. So it's not like a uh, attached, it's more like a PUD type. So, um, on the uh -huh. Yeah, I still put it on anyway. Seller, yeah, that's why we ask seller to pay, yeah. Seller can counter, they are not gonna pay anything. Yeah, sure, they can counter. But usually, uh, like say Roller High doesn't have a CD inspection anyway, so it doesn't really have compliance. So they, they basically it's not, if I were counter, it's, I would say uh, paragraph 7, D, 2, and 3 is not apply. Instead of some listing agent, they just say remove, reject it. That's not really a proper word. If on my counter, I would say, are not apply. That's make the buyer feel more comfortable, the wording. Reject it. I mean, reject me, the, the wording, a lot of people doesn't like it. But it's, it is though, but it's not apply. Because it's not CD, doesn't have a compliance. So that's why sometimes the wording is pretty important. <laughs> yeah. And, those are estimate value. The one on the C if you say average value on the market. And that's a, on the bottom, that's a, within the range. And how often they update? Last time they update, June 14. They updated weekly. This one, um, personally, I think it more accurate than uh, Zillow. But I mean, at least this is for the, uh, at least the average. Zillow is actually, they will focus on particular that property. But that particular property, sometimes it's because they use the algorithm. It's not like personally you can see it uh, closer to the street, major street or the floor plan condition. It's really hard, you know, to value the, the house. So they will either overshoot or undershoot. I'm glad, you know, they are not accurate. If they are accurate, First of all, appraiser out of a job. Lender, they can just use a Zillow as a value. They don't, have, they don't need to hire the appraiser. Second, we, we are. Yeah. But since we're the service job, we are a whole lot better. So we are hardly been, will be replaced by artificial intelligence. I know a lot of people just like Amazon, they still lay off a lot of people. Why? Well, because they, did, did you know when they, I found out they, when they order their stuff they, through the vendor, it's actually AI ordering. They actually determine what price I, we, we will pay for, see if you will agree or not. You, usually they have a purchaser, right? They lay out, lay off all the purchaser. And because the, uh, um, the AI actually make more accurate ordering and better profit for Amazon. So, I mean, if they can do the same thing like those purchasers, they just lay out 100,000 purchasers and just computer, they can just email it to all the vendor. Are you taking this price for your product? And how? Because they will figure out what's your profit, what's your cost, everything. And they will just, you know, order through the computer and you will re receive. And they will see, and usually the vendor will say, oh, okay, this is ordered by AI. They did that already on Amazon. Yeah, they lay off all the uh, purchaser department. <laughs> because they can work out 24 hours a day. 
right? Because a lot of uh, items, they are in a foreign country. Yeah. Confidence score, that means actually how accurate this one is at 85%. Okay. Confidence score. MLS number, you can see that, you know, what's a, who is a current, you know, listing agent, which proper, uh, which company and what price? And when did they put it on? Okay, the status change. And those are the MLS status before. They even show on the real list. So you know when they, how much they purchased back then? 375,000. Back to 2008. And now they want to sell it for 629,000. And they tried to lease it before? What, 2650? 2850 maybe? Yeah, those are the, the lease. They got canceled. They thought about a lease it. Now they probably cannot lease it out. So they sell it. And still on the market since what, April? You see, this is, you know, how much they purchased before. Okay, this is their fine. This is uh, for the purchase price history. 2009, 365, 2008. Okay. On um, this company, they sold it for $431,000. And this person, they bought it, you know, for $365,000. 2007, look at how, how much they sold it for. Six hundred thirty thousand dollar. What happened? Yeah, it got foreclosed. <laughs> because you see, first American loan star. Okay, so that from here to here, from this guy to here. What happened? Does not have a connection here? Because it got foreclosed. You can look at the mortgage history. Trustee sale. You got notice default. That's why you can see the history of this property. And those are the long, how much they borrow in 2016, 2015, 2012, who is a lender all here. That's a mortgage history. Then if you got any foreclosure history that you like look at the bottom. Well, I don't know, sometimes a private lender <laughs> or smaller banker. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, but I mean, sometimes it could be, a, yeah, private lender. Possibly a, a, a bank. Yeah, possibly, yeah. They can just do the mortgage business, sure. Possibly. If they got tons of money, yes. So that's why you can see that, you know, who's a lender and what's what type of a a, a mortgage. Most likely it's conventional. Yeah. So that's why. Yeah. Any question? Realist? No. Okay. Then we'll stop right here, and on the uh, Thursday, I will start with the CMA. I know you guys want a CMA report. I'll, I'll tell you, I do the, the cloud CMA. I'll kind of go over with you on the cloud CMA, how we do it. Then, then I will, you know, pretty much finish up, you know, for the MLS part. Then I will go through the last portion as for the listing and the buyer strategy. Mm -hmm. How do you, you know, Overcome the objection, and so do some of a strategy. Depend on how you depend on the, what kinds of buyer, how you do it, everything. Because that is the negotiation part from buyer and listing agent. All have to. That's we all negotiate everything every day. That's the beauty of our career. <laughs> okay, thank you for coming.